This is fine. You know what else is fine, lads? Fire Kings before the Phantom Nightmare support. Let's go ahead and get into the deck profile today, shall we? So this is nothing too crazy. This is pretty much your box standard Fire King list before the Phantom Nightmare cards come out where you start playing the Snake Eye engine. So this is basically gonna be Wanted Fire King. So let's go ahead and start off here. We are playing triple of the legendary Fire King Ponyx. The best starter in the deck grabs you any Fire King spell and trap, can special summon itself if a fire monster you control is destroyed by card effect, and then can just get itself back on the next standby phase if it was in the graveyard because it was destroyed by card effect. Fantastic card. We're playing double Fire King Avatar Arvada. Uh, there's people that are arguing to play this at three. There's people arguing to play it at one. I think two is just fine. You can get to it easily enough if you already open your other starters. It's basically just Kawaki Meru Guardian, um, but for Fire Kings, you just, if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can destroy one other fire monster in your hand or field and negate that effect. But as well, if it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, it is an extender that can special summon a fire monster from your graveyard. So it's just a good card all around. We are playing one Fire King Avatar Barong. This is just a card that you want to destroy from deck to be able to get a search on the following standby phase. Uh, there's some hands you need to go into him, so you play him. But not always. The deck's usually consistent enough. You're not really like hurting to get him. We're also playing two Sacred Fire King Garunix. This guy is your biggest extender, your biggest body, does the most for the deck. Basically, him and Ponix just kind of carry the whole thing, uh, tied together with our Fire King High Avatar Kirin. Just insane. Th these cards are ridiculous. If you haven't read them yet, I urge you guys to go do so. They are just bonkers cards. Basically, you're going Ponix, get Fire King Island, destroying the Ponix, adding Garunix, summoning Garunix. Garunix popping either Barong or Kirin from deck, depending on what you have in hand. Um, but if you do Barong, basically you're grabbing this guy in the standby. So on your opponent's turn, you can pop a card, summon him out, summon back your Garunix, and then you can do some crazy plays from there. So now for the Fire King spells, we are playing Triple Fire King Sanctuary. It's the continuous spell that gets you the field spell, also allows you to exceed on your opponent's turn using Fire King monsters you control, <clears throat> and also can protect the Fire King Island, which is just fantastic. Amazing card all around, would not play it at less than three. Uh, also playing double Fire King Islands, you, you need two. One just isn't enough usually. If the first one gets outed, you need to be able to get to a second one. And you don't want to play three because it is a hard once per turn, so you don't want to like brick on too many of these. You just need the second one in case the first one gets dealt with. Next up here, we're playing one Circle of the Fire Kings and one Fire King Skyburn as extra search targets for our Ponix. If we happen to open up Ponix and Sanctuary, then uh, or even just Ponix and Fire King Island, then we're fine. Skyburn helps us break boards. Circle of the Fire Kings helps us extend. They're just good flex tools to be able to go into should you need to with your Ponix. They're also usable on the follow-up. If you do Ponix turn one to get to your Fire King Island plays, you can search one of these two on the follow-up to help deal with your opponent's board and play through whatever they did establish through what you had on field. Now for the Wanted package, we're playing Triple Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils, just mandatory for this, because uh, we're also playing currently two Diabell Star of the Black Witch. These ratios will change once the Phantom Nightmare stuff comes out after Maze, because then we'll have Bonfire and Populous, which will help us get into our two copies of original Sinful Spoil Snake Eye. Basically, once Populous releases, we drop these two cards right here, go down to one and one, keep the three wanted, and then we throw in three Bonfire, two Populous, and we're just good to go. Um, of course, you'd have to swap around some other stuff, too, because that's five versus two cards, but you get the gist of it. To complement the Sinful Spoils package, we're playing one Snake Eye Ash and one Snake Eye's Flamberge Dragon. Snake Eye's Flamberge is just an incredible boss monster, and if you open up the Diabell Star stuff, you can go Snake Eye, or you can go the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye, get rid of your Diabell Star, summon out Ash from deck. Ash can then add your Ponix, so you can normal summon your Ponix to get full combo, and then later in the turn, you can Ash send itself another card to get Flamberge out, and Flamberge is just a ridiculous boss monster, so there's no reason not to play him. Also floats into two level ones when he goes from the hand or fields of the graveyard, so just incredible card right there. So that's it for the engine of the deck. The rest is entirely non-engine. This is a 43 card deck and we have a ton of non-engine, which seems kind of fitting for this format because we kind of need a lot of these and we have options to go with in the side deck here. So we're playing Triple, Ash Blossom, and Joyous Spring, just the most versatile hand trap in the format. It hits all the important stuff, uh, namely Labyrinth, because you're going to need extra hand traps to deal with them once they get transaction rollback. Next, we're playing triple copies of Effect Veiler, good into a lot of decks as well, just an extra negation. 
also playing triple ghost bell and haunted mansion once again labyrinth is going to be feared pretty shortly here once transaction rollback comes out so this is an extra answer to deal with their trap cards and to deal with the rest of the format we're playing triple jewel and lockbirds this hits a lot of the big decks still this will hit other fire king decks this will hit rescue ace this will hit manadium there's a lot of decks where just droll will annihilate if you don't need it you get rid of it in side decking it's i mean it's pretty simple but it's a really good card to see still and then to finish off the hand traps for the non-engine we have triple copies of infinite impermanence it, just more copies of effect veiler but ones that you can also use on your turn if your opponent establishes a board and you need to be able to deal with one of their end board pieces it's just a phenomenal card also plays around the tactics and then lastly for the deck here we have one copy of Kari Kari Div Incarnate this is an alternate option to search off of your snake eye ash if you're going second I just find it worth to play in the main because it's only one card it's an extra target for your ash if you open up at or if you open up like uh the wanted and Ponix then you can just search Kurikara off of your Snake Eye Ash and then have ways to deal with your opponent's board. It also is just an extra fire monster that you can pop if you need it in certain circumstances, so that's good too. All right, now for the extra deck here, this isn't too complicated, but once again, this will change quite a bit, become Phantom Nightmare because we get a lot of good cards in there like Populous and the Promethean Princess, as well as having Bonfire and Maze. So we're going to start off. We have a Link Rebo and a Relinquished Anima for our Link 1s. We have a lot of level 1 monsters. Link Rebo for going first, Relinquished Anima for going second to be able to steal your opponent's monsters and help break the board. They're also both dark monsters, which is very relevant. Uh, we're playing one IP Masquerina and, of course, the one SP Little Knight. If you can't afford the Little Knight, you can just throw in other budget options that suit your needs. There's a lot of cards that could substitute here, but SP Little Knight is just so strong on its own that if you have it, you have to play it. Uh, we're also playing one Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy and one Heat of the Fire Charmer Ablaze. These attributes are going to be crazy this format. You're going to have a lot of darks with stuff like Labyrinth. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fires between like Rescue Ace and Fire King. These are probably going to be the two most common attributes that you see during this format. Uh, of course, we also have one Salamigrate Sunlight Wolf to help us recur some resources. Not really much to say about him. He's just great in fire decks. Also playing one Nightmare Unicorn to kind of pair with our SP. It's extra removal, extra link climbing ability. If we have something stuck in our hand that we don't want, we can just discard it and we're good to go. It's actually a lot of cases where getting stuff into the graveyard with Nightmare Unicorn like doesn't lose you advantage at all. It actually, if it helps, it, it honestly, sometimes it helps plus you. Uh, we're also playing one Selene Queen of the Master Magicians. We have several spellcasters, the primary one being Diabell Star, but of course, we also have Droll and Lockbird and Effect Veiler as extra spellcasters. So it makes it really easy for us to be able to link climb up into our access code talker with stuff like our charmers here. Basically, two bodies can end up converting into an access code really easy. That's a 5300 body and can get a couple of pops, which is really nice. We're also playing one Apollos of Bow of the Goddess. It's a flex spot. If you don't want it, you can cut it and put in something else. I just like having it because there's sometimes you get enough bodies turn one that you can just go into a two or three or sometimes even four negate Apollosa just to have on top of your normal disruption. Uh, we also have one Unruled Goddess of the Closed World. Just helps to deal with some of those unoutable bodies. It's it, it's a fantastic card. I just don't want to deal with Pearly, but I don't want to run Herald of the Abyss all that much. And lastly, for the extra deck here, we have some exceeds. So we have the Garunix Eternity, uh, just the one of, basically just when it, when it succeeds summon, you can destroy all of the monsters on the field. And then when it's destroyed, you get a special summon Fire King monsters from your graveyard up to the number of materials that it has. And it can even be the materials that were on it because they'll be in the graveyard now. Uh, we're also playing one Superstar Slayer, Typhon Sky Crisis, the Anti-Zeus, and we're also playing Zeus. I mean, it's not gonna be all that often that Zeus comes up, but in the cases it does come up, it's really nice. Um, once again flex spot if you want to swap out the zeus for something else that's totally fine of course once phantom nightmare comes out you probably won't even need the zeus so that's it for the extra deck let's go ahead and get into the side deck real fast so for the side deck uh i kind of took some interesting choices on what i think might be decent in this format in terms of like non-engine stuff so hopefully these seem decent of course you guys can swap out the non-engine and side deck stuff however you like whatever suits your needs whatever type of situation you're going into whether you know what's going on at your locals or what people have been playing or if you're going to an event a uh, higher tier event and anticipating certain strategies you can play around that as well these are just what i like and what i've been testing with and so far they've been doing pretty decent for me uh so i'm playing triple ghost ogre and snow rabbit this is kind of a comeback card a little bit i think there's going to be a lot of cases where this will be relevant it might not always come up into stuff like labyrinth or rescue ace which is why it's in the side but there's plenty of like 
other decks that this just kind of hits like crazy um you can deal with pearly a little bit you can hit the my friend um you can do or at least early on you can do the my friend if they don't have anything established for it you can hit uh like king sarcophagus if you're going against a graveyard deck like uh horus orchest or horus tier or, you know whatever this this will hit a lot of stuff like that this also hits fire kings if they go like ponix add sanctuary and then they activate sanctuary's effect you just chain ghost ogre it destroys the sanctuary and they don't get to their fire king island um or if they open up with fire king island instead of sanctuary if they go that route when they out the or when they activate the fire king island you just chain ogre it destroys the fire king island and then fire king island's mandatory effect activates so that they have to destroy all of their monsters which isn't always bad for them but it can like put them in an awkward position so i think ogre is a decent enough hand trap to side deck right now like i said it's something i'm tinkering with if you guys want other stuff here feel free to put other stuff here i just have so much room for non-engine that i figured i might as well try it out uh, we'll play a triple fantastical dragon phantasma there's a lot of link summoning in the format right now uh labyrinth is probably the only one that doesn't really do a whole lot of it and of course like branded if you see branded despia or whatever but that's why it sits in the side deck because you don't always see decks that are constantly link summoning but a good majority of them are at least link summoning once so you can get some value off of this to get into more hand traps or get bricks out of your hand or try to dig for uh important cards that you need to see going second so phantasma is a fantastic card also we are running triple in the biru the primal being there's a lot of decks that just end up playing into this and don't always have protection so if you can get into one of those matchups where it's just a turn ender and they don't play around it well then you're just kind of sitting free i mean it's it's nibiru uh for extra going second stuff we also have the two dino wrestler pancratops thank you for bringing my boy back to two uh just a fantastic card at being able to deal with a lot of things just being instant spot removal and being an instant threat especially when there's something like sp in the format that's very prominent uh just being able to have a guy that can freely deal with it is really nice because you can just special summon him without activating an effect go battle phase walk over the sp and then tribute him to pop another card and it's just like completely free uh next up here we have two copies of triple tactics thrust uh just there's a lot of hand traps in the format right now and a lot of monster effects being activated on our turns but it's not as good going first i'm not playing any going first targets for it so i'm only putting it in going second uh so i also have triple tactics talent and duster for our side deck targets but of course we do have main deck targets as well uh we do have the infinite impermanence which is decent sometimes in the right cases uh, it can come up and of course we have our snake eye spell which is just fantastic that's pretty much all the targets that we run but it seems worthwhile enough and once again i have the room for it so i figured i might as well squeeze it in and try it out and see how it goes i think duster is going to be important because it'll force out a lot of early interaction from labyrinth which is really nice um and tactics just helps you to break boards or play through things a lot easier so i like running the one talent two thrust you don't need to see it all the time but if you're like comboing it with like a phantasme then it can really help out a lot to just deal with your opponent's boards and then just be able to establish all your plays and get going so lads that's all i got for today's fire king deck profile of course this deck is going to upgrade a lot once bonfire promethean princess and populace all come out the deck is going to change significantly and it's going to jump up even higher in power level so be sure to stay tuned for that if you guys enjoy the video don't forget to hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more deck profiles in the future we got a lot of things on the burner right now and uh, i know patrick's cooking up a lot of things he's just taking his time with them to make sure they come out really nice and Anyways, lads, that's all I got for you for now. And as always, lads, good fun. Have luck.